It was actually one of my district nurses who suggested it. She came to have a chat when I was first told that basically it was terminal. And we had a good long chat about it and she asked if I'd thought about mistletoe therapy. And I said that I had heard of it, but I thought it was just for breast cancer. And she said, no, that they, they did have other patients who were getting it for various types of cancers. So um, she said that I should go to Clan in the first instance to find out about it. So I got an appointment the following day there and saw Dr McCaffrey there. She started me on the 0.2 milligram injection straight away but suggested that I get my GP to refer me to Dr Guider. So although my GP does um, admit that he's much more comfortable with conventional treatments, he said that at my stage he wasn't going to play God and say that I couldn't have something. So he was quite happy to refer me. So that was, that was the route that I came through. Oh yeah, the fact that the disease left me uh, that completely changed my mind because I was uh, practically doing nothing anymore. I was uh, going vegetal and then slowly everything disappeared and I came back to normal. I feel much more positive in myself um, whereas I guess before when I first got the diagnosis I was kind of wondering how long I had left to go and that thought really doesn't cross my mind anymore. Um, I kind of had got to the stage where I wasn't buying things and I wasn't planning things too far in advance because I didn't know how I would be, I didn't know you know, where I would be so I just I don't think about it at all now, we're making plans way in advance now so I just I, to be quite honest, I just don't think of myself having cancer anymore. I just feel really quite well at the moment, so it's it doesn't dominate my life anymore. Actually, I think my story is a bit different from most people's, that I haven't been diagnosed with cancer, but my system was generally very run down last year, so I was prescribed mistletoe injections as a general boost. I suppose there was a danger that my immune system was really getting very low, and I definitely benefited. I began, you know, gradually to have a greater sense of well-being. Initially, when I first took the mistletoe, you get this rather big reaction, which they say is good because it means that your, your immune system is reacting to what they're giving you. The problem I have, if they didn't intervene, it could possibly have become cancerous. But, I mean, at the same time, my own immune system wasn't dealing with what it should have been on its own, you know? So I think the help of the mistletoe has made my immune system respond a bit more and hopefully save my having to have more surgeries. And I think sometimes when people are coping with difficult situations in their lives, that affects the strength of their immune system and makes them more or less prone to developing certain disease processes at particular times in their life. And I think these are learning experiences, ones we don't always <laughs> wish for, but I think there's always something positive to be gained eventually. Well, they, they see a big change in me for getting the mistletoe. If I hadn't got the, got the mistletoe, it would mean the cancer would been, been all around me. The consultants in haematology said, yes, take your mistletoe, but it will do you no harm, was the attitude, and my GP the same. And it's been my experience in our area that they are, they, they certainly have experience of people being treated with mistletoe, and the experience seems to be good. Um, they keep quoting one lady who's um, survived five years longer than was thought, so... You know, 
the, their experience of it seems to be quite good, so they're quite willing to pass on the information. Some people who haven't personally had experience still are quite interested. Other people have absolutely closed minds and they don't want to listen, they don't want to know. Um, I think generally, amongst people I know, there's a greater curiosity. Everybody was surprised and interested, but nobody had negative comments. Well, the fam the, well, my family said, said if it's going to help you, just go ahead and, and, and get it done. And they, and, and they supported me very, very much, so, and, and they said, it's marvellous how, how you can walk and, and everything like that, but where, where you couldn't do that before. Just take, just take charge as far as you can. Well, take charge from, from your perspective of the illness. You can't be expert in everything, but you're expert in yourself. And the, the doctors can't do it for you. You have to, you have, to have the power um, to do it. Give it a try, because I think you'll find that you do benefit from it. Perhaps not always in a, the obvious way that perhaps you, you had hoped for, but gradually over time you realise that you are benefiting. You know, maybe the results aren't as quick as you would wish them to be, but they are coming in the time that they need to take to come. It's so unfair. <laughs> you know, you've got a chance, you have it, you don't, and I hadn't. It's just, you know, you could get so angry out of that way. And um, I know that the mistletoe experience, these fever experiences I had, um, was the opposite. On the level of experience, there was nothing by chance that I had this cancer. I couldn't have had this fever with the inner experiences of reorganizing things just by chance, which gave me the feeling there was meaning to the illness and meaning to the getting better. And that is somehow, I think, where the mistletoe is the most, um, has been the most helpful for me. And it's certainly improved my quality of life hugely. Um, I used to have, because where my tumour is, it was pressing on the sciatic nerve. I used to have quite a lot of numbness in my leg, which gave me quite a lot of pain. That numbness is gone now. I can go longer between um, taking painkillers. So that kind of indicates to me that it is definitely doing some good. So I would certainly encourage anybody to give it a go and not to give up hope because that's, if nothing else, that's the one thing it gives you, it gives you hope and it, it really empowers you, it makes you feel like you're taking things into your own control again rather than just being told by doctors and oncologists what you have to do and just a general feeling of well-being is worthwhile.